Lord, we worship you. I've been asked, why do I praise as I praise? With the same Holy Spirit that filled David when he walked the earth 3,000 years ago, fills me now. God was so touched by the praises of David, by the worship, the song that he sang, the prophecy that he allowed to flow in the congregation, hallelujah, that he gave him a place in his kingdom and called it after his own name. Can you imagine that? Father said, I'm going to call my eternal kingdom, kingdom of David. Oh, what a marvelous God, what a glorious Lord. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus. What a glorious God. What a marvelous Lord. What a wonderful working power that redeemed us, that's loved us, that's washed us, that's filled us, that's given to us a place in Him forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a place that you can fill in by the Holy Ghost. It can be a hallelujah. It can be a statalamakatona. It can be a yes, Lord. It can be a thank you, Father. There's a place for you to step up into the realms of glory here and participate with the church of Jesus Christ. It can be the lifting of the hands. It can be a dance. Hallelujah. It can be a shout. But there's a place for you. Hallelujah. In the body of Christ, there's a place for you. In the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Woohoo! Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. My mama and Della Mondella see. Hallelujah I, hear the, hallelujah, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, do you not know, do you not know this place has been made available for you? Do you not know, do you not know, do you not know this place of glory that's yeah. been made available to you? Always available, always waiting, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Monday night, and Tuesday night. Always available, always available, always available. Will you not drink, will you not drink, will you not flow? Oh, in the Holy Ghost, what will be your excuse? What will be your excuse for not touching heaven, for not touching glory? It's available, it's available, it's available, it's available, it's available, it's available. All that you seek, all that you want, all that you desire is right here. Everything aside now, Jesus. lay everything aside now, Jesus. and touch glory, touch heaven, worship Jesus, hold nothing oh, back, Jesus and worship Christ Jesus, God. hold nothing <laughs> back, hold nothing back, Lord hold nothing Jesus. back, oh don't waste God. another Sunday being so religious. Hold nothing back. Pour out your heart. Waste not another day. Don't waste your life on vain oh religion. Work to Mabre, Vesi, Rebel, Londa, Rebel, Londa, Rebel, Nanda. Flow in the Holy Ghost. The safe place. It's a safe place. It's not a place of pressure. You don't have to. You get to. It's a safe place. This is the place we run to. We run to this safe haven. We run to this glory. It's what we need. When all else fails, we have his glory. Glory. When everything seems overwhelming, we have His glory. It's what we need. It's what we desire. It's what we hunger for. It's what we long for. All your desires found right here in His glory. In His glory. Jesus, we worship you in your glory, Lord. Come and baptize. Come and fill, Lord. Come and fill, Lord. In your glory, 
Jesus, we're so in love with you. Jesus, we're so in love with you. Jesus, I come so hungry. I come so thirsty today, Lord. To touch heaven. To touch heaven. To touch heaven. To engage with heaven. To engage with heaven. Not to hear a man speak. To hear God speak. To engage with heaven. To speak and commune with Jesus. In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a building made with hands. But a glorious realm. But a glorious realm. A supernatural thing that takes a miracle. It takes a miracle. I must engage with my heart. It takes a miracle. I must engage with my heart, with my passions. Otherwise, I cannot enter in. I cannot enter in. It takes a miracle of all of me. Laying down all of me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus says that if you want to participate with His glory filling all of the land, you must first be willing to let His glory fill your land, to fill your life. That's what the Lord Jesus says. If there's one thing we notice as we look around in the churches throughout the earth, there's very few churches who know how to praise God and worship Him from the heart. They claim to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. They, come, they, they claim to know Jesus, but in the outpouring of the love and affection, they show that they do not know Him. Uh, I tell you, Father will not take praise that doesn't come from the depths of the cries of the heart and sincerity and truth. Today we want that reality, that change to take place in you. There are some of you who stood in this place for many years and you've never heard. Satan has been able to stop you. It's not so much as it were. Your fault or your blame and really is that you've never known how to say no to Satan never known how to resist the powers of darkness. You don't know the battle that is a front. It's confronting you. How the enemy would try to shut your mouth, stop your mouth. You know where the body of Christ begins to function together? In a great outpouring of praise and affection. It doesn't matter. The words of the song don't even matter. They don't even matter. It's the cries of the heart the God delights in. It's the sacrifices of praise that come from the innermost being. God, see God, men, men, men are okay with superficial interaction, but God demands truth. 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 Father will give you everything. Father has been willing to give us everything. To give us everything. Give us everything. Oh, all we have to do is find ourselves hooking up with truth. And now the supply flows right into our lives. I tell you, I'm telling you, listen to me. You want to be a part of what God is doing in our lives. You want to be a part of it. Because we're not going to be a superficial, dried up, can't get a praise and shout out of our mouth church. I don't care. I don't care what the dynamics are. People aren't looking for you to be all whatever it is you've been. People want to see the glory in your face. I love looking around and seeing the glory. I love looking around and seeing the glory. You see, what happened with me one day as my heart was changed and my heart was hooked up with God and what He feels, I begin to feel. What makes Him happy makes me happy. What makes Him sad makes me sad. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't want to be sad. Ever again in the house of God. 
Amen. <laughs> I never want to be unhappy and get in the house of God. Oh, because because people listen to me. I don't want to say the word, but the Holy Ghost demands me. Pretender. I don't want to say it, but the Lord demands me. He says, I said, I said, standing here in my head arguing with the Lord. No, Lord, I'm going to say that. I'm trying to be positive. Pretender. Don't be a pretender. Pretender. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And you know what will happen to you when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire? A shout of praise will come out of your mouth that cannot be stopped by anything. Hallelujah. You know what will happen? You will have the same, you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, you'll have the same compassion for the loss that Jesus has. Hallelujah. Praise God. My goodness. Listen. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the bo- God, the Father, is looking for the body of Christ to begin to function in the earth. God wants to invade the earth with his glory. He wants his glory to fill the earth. He wants his name to be exalted above the heavens, to be exalted in all the earth. But you and I have to understand, we the ones who sin, we can't go until we baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire. We can't go until we find our place in the body of Christ. You're never going to find that until you find a heart-to-heart relationship with Jesus that fills your soul day in, day out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, hallelujah, 365 days a year or 300 days a year, whatever your lunar cycle may be. In the name of Jesus from this time forward, let the glory of the Lord fill your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're looking for the body of Christ to begin to function and move. You know, here's what I look for. It's real simple. I look for people who are caught away in praise. When I see people caught away in praise, I don't have a problem. Then come get the microphone. They're not caught away in praise. I'm checked. I'm going, what am I getting? What are we going to get now? Is this a nosedive into huh, problems or is this a lift up into glory? Because I know no man has anything unless he first received it from heaven and you can receive something right from heaven right now, but you've got to be willing to touch heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Is that what he says? Is that what he said? He said, draw nigh unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He want to draw nigh to God with the problems. I'm going to come draw nigh to him with my love and my affection. I'm going to worship and praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Just be seated for a while. Just going to have a few moments. I'm, I'm, I know my friends from Japan have to leave early. Uh, go and catch the flight back to Japan. God's just given, I mean, things have been exploding in my heart for the nation of Japan since just before I went to Japan. I got on the phone with one of my friends this morning. I said, look, we're going to have to start launching a literature attack on Japan. I'm re- I said, let's invade Japan. Let's invade. See, I don't need, not, I don't need nothing but God to do it. Somebody said, well, you got this and that. I don't need nothing but God. He don't care if he's saved by many or by few. I said, let's invade Japan with literature. I said, we got to start. They have very few. They have very little literature. These are hungry people. They have very little literature about flowing in the Holy Ghost and moving the supernatural. Let's invade. Hallelujah. Let's invade Japan. And my friend said, hey, I've already got books in, uh, translated in Japanese. I said, okay, good. You, we got a head start thing. Let's go. Let's do this thing, man. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll be willing to recognize you have an opportunity with us here today. I want you, I know that many of you have given, you've given your efforts, you've given your human efforts, but I'm going to tell you right now, very few of you have ever stepped into the realms of glory and begin to function with the power of God, the Holy Ghost. Very few of you in this place. We're right to you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We, we proclaim these things to you in Jesus' name. The Father says, I don't care about your past. It doesn't matter what's hindered you before up until this point. The Lord would assign you this day a conscript from heaven with authority and the ability to represent him in a way that you never realized was even possible. That goes beyond the realms of what you think that you can do or what you've seen or what examples that you've had before set before you. For Christ Jesus is set before you. Hallelujah. Both crucified, raised up, exalted, 
at the right hand of the Father and ready to empower you to change the world around you. I'm asking you for 12 months of your life. Today, I'm asking you for 12 months of your life, says the Lord. I'm asking you for 12 months of your life. In the year 2014, I'm asking you to turn your life over to me, says the Lord. And allow me to fill you with my divine power and my glory so that you'll burn with the Holy Ghost fires that you read about in the, in the scriptures that have been testified throughout the generations since Jesus was exalted to the right hand of the Father. Come on now. Papa's looking at you. He's talking to you. Will you give him a tithe of your day? For the year 2014, would you rise up and give him a tithe? Two and a half hours a day, a tithe unto the Lord to go invade San Diego in a concerted effort. Just one year, just 12 months. Can you rise up beyond your, your doubts, your weaknesses? Will you be willing to no longer, because of your problems and disappointments and discouragements, run to other things, but instead turn and run to me, says the Lord? Will you come and cleave to me? Will you come and allow those things that have hurt you, those things that have caused pain in your life and suffering and discouragement, will you allow them to put a press upon your soul and lay hold of that which I have for you? Or will you continue to retreat and be defeated? Will you give me 12 months? Will you give me 12 months? 12 months, a tithe every day of your time. Two and a half hours. That is all about reaching the lost. That's all about going after those who are hurting, those who are suffering. Many who have called upon my name, who have cried out in their affliction, and I answered them, and then they turned back unto the world, but are waiting for you to come and tell them that the opportunity is still theirs. Will you go? says the Lord, and be a part of that which I'm doing in seeking and saving the lost. If you will, you know what's going to happen? Faith will rise up in your life and you will find yourself living in heaven. You'll find yourself in all the blessings that belong to the household of God. Your your countenance will no longer be fallen. You will no longer look as those that are disappointed and discouraged, but you'll shine with the brightness of heaven. You'll know the power of His grace. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Me and my house, we've decided we are going to give it all to the Lord like never before in the year 2014 to reach the lost. This is the first Sunday. This is the first week of this year. Every day we will be here. Every day we will be putting the press. Somebody said you've got these various schools going on. Yes, we do. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's certainly not sitting around in the shop talking theory. Hallelujah. It's a very practical application. This Tuesday night, we'll be doing School of Evangelism. And it ain't going to be sitting around theorizing. It's going to be saying, here's what we're hitting right around here. This is the way we're going to do it. And we're going to be just, we're going to be on our face praying, crying out to God. Hallelujah saying, Lord, show us exactly how to do it. And every time we go out, we're going to saturate it with a greater prayer. We're going to take a hold of a supernatural faith. People try to do it in their own human effort, and you're not going to get anything done. When you baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire, you'll, I'm telling you right now, you'll be the Pied Piper of heaven. They'll be following you everywhere you go. I guarantee you. The world is dying and suffering. I, I, know, I know this for a fact. I know this is why Father set us here in this place. And, and you're, not going to, you're not going to let Satan stop you anymore. He's chained you and put you in his prison and made you dance to his little string. Huh? For too many years now, you're going to cut all the strings. You're going to bust the chains. You're coming out of prison today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Yes, you are. This year is going to be different for you. You're coming out of prison. Amen. Look at how Paul and Silas came out of prison. They were worshiping God. They were sitting there complaining. Look at what situation we got ourselves into. God, why would you do this to us? We've been giving everything for you. And why is it it turned out like this for us? No, they, they worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Chains fall off. Prison doors open. Now they liberate it. Go everywhere with great, I guarantee you. You'll find out one day. We'll all discover it together. Paul and Silas stepped into a whole new dimension of authority when the prison was shaken that night. <laughs> whole new dimension after they were persecuted and, was, and, and, and suffered for his name's sake. There are very few people who suffered for his namesake in this place here today. Very few people who suffered for his namesake. You suffered for your disappointments. You suffered for wrong choices. You suffered over whatever, earthly things. But very few people have suffered for the name of Jesus here in this place today. And I want to help you change that this year. Hallelujah. God wants to help you change that this year. Hallelujah. We're going to equip you to go with a simple gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, you're not coming to the meeting without somebody. You just can't come. You just say, well, I just can't come. Pastor said I couldn't come to the meeting. So I said, why didn't you go to church today? Pastor said I couldn't come to church. He did. Yeah, he said I couldn't come to church unless I'd go reach the lost. Unless I'd bring somebody. Huh? Hallelujah. My goodness gracious. You get desperate about being in church. I can't go to church. I'm going to have to go to the Baptist church. I'm going to have to go over there to that other church. I'm going to have to go to that Presbyterian church. I'm going to have to go with those people who call themselves Pentecostal and they act just about the same as I do. Uh, they don't got a shout in them. Uh, they, don't know how to, they don't know how to move anything in faith. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my son and I, we were moving heavy gates this past week. With our strength, we're moving these gates. What can you move by the Spirit? Huh? Think about it. What can you move by the Spirit? Not by your flesh. Not by your human effort. Not by your power. What can you move by the Spirit? God said you can move mountains if you take a hold of just a little bit of faith. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The only reason you have a right to say amen is because you're willing to do it. If you're willing to do it, God knows. And I can tell an amen God's happy with because when he's happy with it, I'm happy with it. When I hear a hallelujah, he's not happy with it. He's like, hey, you know what? That just is nothing. Or an amen. That's, that's all that is is religious. Huh? It's always saying you're going to go, but you never do it. Come on now. You start laying down your life for, for Christ Jesus, I'm going to tell you right now, Christ Jesus is going to be seen in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's a good amen right there. Hallelujah. So I'm, I, said, I said, I'm afraid to say amen. Who knows what's going to happen? Well, that's good for you. That's good. Man, let the fear of the Lord be on you even stronger till the amen comes out right. Get on your face every day and begin to pray. Say, God, I want to have a right amen, not a wrong amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Boy, that's a really high word. This is I have to be soprano to sing in this. Could you lower it? What do you go? Key are you in? Huh? What key are you in? Could you lower your key? Huh? Go to D. Blessed assurance. It's the same chord. It's in the same chord. Manda bananganda deble. Oh well. Peri nangaleshi, peri nangaleshi, te peratita. Lire mama mananda de pekeli sata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to sing the song. Kikta nanama. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Nazada. Thank you, Jesus. Mamamba manombre de se tita la nakatara ne prete. Lire song beratina. Mindanda de kene. Situ kara. Manda de vitura sara de nidi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed assurance, Jesus, he is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. I was purchased by love. I've been born of his spirit. And I've washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. 
This is my story. Oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. I have blessed assurance for Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Oh, the purchase of love. I've been born of the Spirit. I've been washed in His blood. And this is my story. Oh, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Oh, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior. On the day long. Hallelujah. This Saturday, this Friday night, we're going to have, we're going to begin the School of the Spirit. And um, then every other week on Friday night, we're going to alternate between School of the Spirit and Order in the House. The Lord has just so stirred my heart to come out strong against feminism, to come out against rebellion and defiance that has found its place to dwell in the midst of the church. I'm, the Lord told me earlier this, or later, right towards the end of the year, the Lord spoke to me, I'm going to make you so radical, I'm going to make you so full of authority to come out against these things. And it's going to, you know what, it's going to cause chaos to some degree, chaos of the cross. It will. People be up and warm. Up in the up for. I mean, they'll be filing out out of the meeting, you know, holding placards, <laughs> calling nine one one. You can't believe what he's saying over there. Hallelujah! But I tell you right now, God's going to clean the house up. God's going to. There's judgment coming in the house of God and rebellion and the defiance and the stubbornness that has existed and found its place, beginning in the houses. See, beginning in people's homes when it's allowed to exist there. Me would say, well, I ha- you you know, my goodness, why well, have to you know. We have this high, high divorce rate and can't get divorced. I'll tell you right now, a, a, a accommodating rebellion is far worse than re- divorce any day. Any day. Hallelujah. It's true. And I'm telling you, if, if, if Sarah, if Hagar had not chided against Sarah, huh? Had, and whatever was in Hagar, it was going to come down into Ishmael, and Ishmael would do the same thing to Isaac. And a house of strife, and a house divided, it could not exist. So the Lord said, thrust her out. Thrust her out. Not having it. Thrust her out. And then, of course, Paul made it allegory, you know, and it became an allegory. It became a testimony of how the law could not be inheritance with the grace. Amen. It's true. I'm thrust that thing out. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I'm not going to I'm not going to sojourn or accommodate in anything that, that looks like a demon, a demon spirit. Praise God. We're going to walk around and full of the Holy Spirit and everybody who doesn't want to go. They might as well go ahead and just pack up and leave now. They don't want to go with us into the realms of divine glory. Pack up and leave now because we're heading there not tolerating anything that Satan is doing. Not tolerating anything. No power of darkness. No sin in our own life individual. And we're not going to accommodate sin around us. Not in the household of faith. Not among the people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 True. And we're going to see everybody come into the kingdom. We have a lot of gra- that, that can possibly come into the kingdom. And we're going to have a lot of grace. And we're going to have a lot of mercy for them. Amen. 
but we're going to have an example. The glory of God's going to shine on their face. And if somebody comes in and says, hey, why is so-and-so always frowning? I'm just going to tell them they've been sitting around in the church a long time and they never come to know Jesus and never allowed the power of the Holy Ghost. And I just, you know, I'm going to tell them, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be ashamed of just uh, talking bad about you. Amen. Uh, because... Because talking bad about you, I can uphold his glory and his honor and his name. So long as I'm upholding his glory and honor and his name, I can talk bad about anybody. So long as it's going to uphold his glory and honor and his name. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Amen. I just want to set the record straight. I want to understand everybody, help everybody understand exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it. I'm telling you, God has purpose for us to invade the city. And it cannot be something that is just religious. It cannot just be something that, that, that looks like an, an everyday, you know, manifestation of, of more human problems and more human effort. It's got to be something that looks and, and, and feels like heaven, looks and feels like Jesus. And we want all of you to come help us. And then on Saturday, and, and so School of Spirit's going to be about that. And it's going to be it, it, when, we, when we start talking about flowing in the Holy Ghost, moving in the power of God, first and foremost, understanding, most important thing is understanding how you keep yourself in joy, how you keep yourself in love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. How you keep yourself in the goodness. Praise the name of the Lord. How your chief enemy is sadness and sorrow and misery and pain. And you, the redeemed of the Lord, and if you've been ransomed and you turn uh, with singing and design and everlasting joy is on your head, and it's your responsibility to keep everlasting joy on your head. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's true. And then out of that, you know, we're going to, Daniel's going to start prayer meeting. Prayer meeting will begin on, night, on Friday night, School of the Spirit, begin at 6 o'clock, or from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And you, if you really want to understand how to begin to flow and move in the, in the gifting of the Spirit, in the School of the Spirit, you've got to learn to understand how to function in prayer and fasting. And so if you don't, you know, somebody says, well, I'm, 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 what are you talking about, man? I just want to do signs, wonders, miracles. I don't know prayer <laughs> fasting. Yeah, well, you're not going to do much unless you take a hold of the living God. You know, Ann and I were talking about just, just this the other day. Mariah Woodworth, Edder, she went through much, much pain and suffering. She lost many children to sickness and disease. And, you know, her sickness and, 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 the, and the, the, the sickness and disease that took her children's life, it could have caused her... Of course, she's just a Catholic girl. She didn't know about healing. It could have caused her to blame God and accuse God and be all downcast and upset. No, her pain and her suffering turned her to Jesus. She came, became this person who really wanted to know the Lord, really wanted to know God, really wanted to know the things concerning the goodness of God. And she stepped into a realm of glory where she just go away in heaven. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you read about, if you, you, there's some great books by Mariah Woodworth Hedder. It's one of the things we're going to be doing at School of Spirit is, putting, you know, books on the shelf that we're going to require people to read because it's faith building. And one day they brought to Mariah Woodworth Edder, they brought to her a young child that was completely mentally insane. The child was not only mentally insane, the child was blind, the child, child was deaf, and the child was mute. Mama Edder took, her, took the child up in her arms and the baby was immediately healed. Why? Because she visited heaven. Heaven and visited her. In that relationship, the power of God flowed through. There was no, there was no great efforts, no great struggles. She touched heaven. See, you don't have, you don't have anything until you first receive from heaven. No man, nobody can do anything in the realms of the kingdom of God unless you see the Father do it. That is a, that is an event that you decide how much you want to participate with. Because if you're turning to earthly comforts, if you're turning to earthly things to fill your soul, to fill your longing, to fill your needs, you'll never know this heavenly realm. God's calling you and I out of an earthly realm to begin to participate with the heavenly realm. Not, I mean, so many people are just full of information. They're full of information and knowledge, and boy, they can go on and on and on. Listen, dear people, God the Holy Ghost wants to be our teacher. He wants to teach us how to do the work of the ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's what School of Spirit's all about. Like I said, we'll be alternating School of Spirit um, on Friday nights with order in the house. And we're really going to be emphasizing in the order of the house the model of Christ Jesus and his church. Jesus purchased the church so that the church would follow him, not argue with him. 
Amen. And you can understand how much a woman knows the Lord by how well she follows her husband and is submitted to her husband. And we're going to get after that, man. I'm going to get after her like never before because it's God's divine order. People don't like it. Feminists are screaming and hollering. The rebellious are just saying right now, I'm not coming, I'm leaving. But that's all right. You know what? I want God's divine order. I want his way. I want Pentecost at any cost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody shout amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. (laughs) Then on Saturday night, beginning this Saturday night, we're going to start the school of worship. And um, the Lord has entrusted worship and a gifting into my life. And I'll make sure I impart that to as many people as possible. That gifting is in Ruthanna's life in a very powerful way. And 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 Joshua's life, and I want to see it grow more in everybody's life. Hallelujah! And 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 it's in you know it's I these this gifting is in you know Elizabeth and Daniel and some of you, but you just need to exercise more in it. I'll give yourself more to it because what happens is whatever you're really interested in, <laughs> you're going to give yourself to it. A, a friend of mine was telling me yesterday. He said, "Well, I started wanting to play the piano and." <laughs> And so I started giving myself 15 minutes a day to it. I just laughed and said, hey, you ain't going to learn the piano that way. <laughs> he said, then my wife started playing the piano. She started doing two, three hours a day. I said, now you're going to have breakthrough. Now you're going to learn how to play the piano. And same way with prayer. All of a sudden, you give 15 minutes a day to prayer, you ain't going to have no breakthrough. You give it two, three hours a day to prayer, you're going to have yourself a breakthrough. And it, it, you give yourself two, three hours a day to worship in the Lord, giving yourself to these things of the Spirit. You have a breakthrough in your life, man. Hallelujah. People just think, well, you know, uh, I can just, you know, just do whatever it is. Mind my own business, do whatever. And then it, God's going to uh, give me this divine ability because it's all by grace. You don't understand grace. You don't understand grace. Grace brought you into a relationship that made you one with him because you love him more than anything else. Now, do you have grace? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if you have grace, yeah. Amen. <laughs> you will have a divine longing and ability to do these things. And that's what... You know, once again, that's what the school of spirit is going to be about. That's what the school of worship is going to be about, too. It's just how do, how do we take people to a different level of flowing in the anointing? And we, we're going to have, with that, helping people understand how to do sound uh, engineering and sound design. And, of course, I'm going to be on the platform. Some of the time I'm going to be on the, in the sound design area. Some of the other times we're going to, you know, just, you know, whatever equipment you have, you can be good at sound design, sound engineering. Even if it's just, you know, two little small speakers, huh? And a three-channel mixer board. You can get good at it. And, you know, so people think they got to have all this, you know, various different equipment. No, you just need the anointing. That's the only equipment that you need. And so we were going to invite everybody to come and, and that, ha- that wants to do music and wants to do a song. And if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, we're first going to deal with you about being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And if you sit here like this, expressionless, you look like an empty husk of corn. <laughs> then, then we're just going to minister to you in the back room in deliverance. We're going to minister deliverance. True. We're going to minister deliverance. And then we'll call down the fire upon your life, get you baptized in the Holy Ghost, and then you can sing a song. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to open the mic up because I'm this guy. Look, I'm going I'm to say it's holies of holies. You know, I get, I, we have the privilege of going into the holies of holies. I'm not, I'm not interested in professionalism, although professionalism is good, okay? If, especially if it's been only, really, if it's been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Professionalism means you've really given yourself over to your gifting, but having it baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. To take, to take your best offering, right? That's the best that you have, and that's the best that you can do. And now bringing that and putting it on the altar and asking God's fire to fall on it. That's really the way it ought to be. That's the way it needs to be. What we do is we bring God the leftovers. Well, take that to your boss and see if he gives you a promotion with that. Huh? Take your one hour of time or whatever, your frown and sadness and sorrow, to your boss and see if he promotes you with that. Huh? He can't promote you. He's say, ah, get out of here. We got, we got, we got, we got, we got things to achieve. We got goals to meet. Huh? Well, we're not, we're not going to take all of our time centered around your problem. <laughs> Amen. People think that all heaven ought to throw, you know, go on hold and slam on the brakes to just focus on your single problem. The world is a big place. There's seven billion people in it, 
and many of them have never heard the gospel. It's, it's a hurting, dying place and Satan having his way while people sit around and are just overwhelmed with doubt and unbelief. No more in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 And then we're going to have, you know, the schedule. Thanks, Chrissy, for getting the schedule put together. We're going to have, of course, the School of, uh, of, of Missions are going to be meeting. And once again, it's going to be just about strategizing, strategizing what we're doing in missions, what we're going to do on the Native American uh, uh, reservations, what we're going to be doing um, in other nations of the earth. I just got a, just got a call from uh, Papua New Guinea, West New Britain. They want me to come and do a crusade this year. And I said, okay, I, I, as soon as they heard, as soon as I heard them, the, the Papua New Guinean on the other side of the phone. I said, okay, I'll come. I'm coming because anyway, we're going to do Iri and Jaya with Tim. And as far as that, doing Iri and Jaya, Jarapura, and, uh, uh, and um, West New Britain, I'm going to be here because I am going to be very focused at giving this, giving San Diego everything I got about reaching the lost. Because I've given San Diego everything I've got in different, different dimensions. That this, I'm giving San Diego everything I've got at reaching the lost 2014. And I'm looking for a few Holy Ghost men and a few Holy Ghost women to invade this place with me. I'm looking, I'm looking for some special forces group, uh, special forces troops in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With, to go with special weaponry that you've been skilled and trained in. Amen. Amen. To stop every power of darkness. Because it ain't about human beings. They just blinded and entrapped and ensnared by the enemy of their soul. We're going to go cast out the devil, run the principality out of town. Amen. 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 We're going to go break off the heavy yokes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. We're going to do this, Ruthie. Yes. We're going to do this. Man lang de la hate. Shika tokana. Manan betila. Ha 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 ha. And then, of course, Saturdays are going to be devoted to doing that. We're not going to limit it to Saturdays. You know, we want to, everybody who's going to be involved with us in the School of Evangelism, we're going to have a plan for your community where you live so that when you get off work, You've got some assignments right around your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Because I tell you right now, you put your heart into your neighborhood, and let's just say you have a 1,000 people in your neighborhood, you're going to at least get 10. Huh? I'm saying that there's a tide. I'm saying there's a tide in the land. I'm saying there's 3.2 million people here. I'm saying there's 320,000 people right now to reach. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. And I know the troops are limited, the resources are limited, so we're just going to set the goal of 1,000 people. 1,000 people in Jatva Mankadela. Hallelujah. 1,000 people. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Namangland, they say. Why don't you do it? Why don't you just live for the kingdom? We're giving you an opportunity not to wait till next year, not to wait till the year after next, not to wait till some time in the future, because sometime in the future is never going to come. Behold, it's here. We're giving you an opportunity to change your life this year. God has given us an opportunity. We have a window of opportunity. This way the Lord spoke to me strongly and said when, when we made the transition, of, I'm, give, I'm giving you a window of opportunity. I'm, give, I'm giving you authority and power. Now you do it. You run with it. Amen. Amen. Is that exciting? Yes. I'm excited. But at the same time, I understand the seriousness of it. Huh? I understand the seriousness. I understand the responsibility of it. I want to encourage you in the seriousness of it and the responsibility of it. So really, when we're talking about these schools, I want you to understand them as organization meetings that you are signed up for so that you can ultimately get a certificate or an advancement in the kingdom of God. Somebody said, well, I'm, are you going to give me a certificate at the end of it? God can give you a certificate. <laughs> hallelujah. He, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do I get a badge? You're going to get an anointing. Hallelujah. You're going to get an anointing. Praise God. If there's anything I want to do is I want to be a part of, J of the nation of Japan and raising up people who know how to follow the teacher of the Holy Ghost. There has to be an understanding of the school of the Spirit because whether you recognize it or not, 
when you called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God transformed you and changed you and brought you into the school of the Holy Ghost so that you may learn how to conduct your life and your manner after the fashion of the Lord Jesus Christ, being in every way governed for heaven, Amen. living in heaven. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of... And we, so, I mean, I look around here right now and I see, you know, many Jesus... <laughs> Jesus has been reproduced on the inside of you. I see many. Now I want to see you grow and mature, start acting like Jesus, and get Jesus' results. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't tell me, Jesus, come have your results. Ha. No. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Lord's giving you an anointing right now. He's giving you a divine anointing, a divine opportunity for San Diego, for this region. You have it. Yes. Now you have to make a choice to refuse the anointing opportunity because you're too busy doing other things. You've got your work, you've got your this, you've got your that. You know, they said, well, I've got a, a yoke of oxen. I need to go prove them. <laughs> I've got this thing I need to go do. I've got that thing I need to go do. Just say, you're not worthy of the kingdom. You're not worthy of the kingdom. Huh? I'm, I'm not, are you hear me? Yes. I'm telling you, that's what Jesus said. I'm not, gonna, I'm not running the risk. Are you going to run the risk? <laughs> First thing you've got to have, though, before you can go, is you've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And so we're not going to send you unless you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, so don't worry. Huh? Some of you think you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. You're not. You're not. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to take you in the back room and talk to you. And you get mad at me and get upset at me if you want. That's fine. No problem. Okay, at least we, we understand each other very clearly. <laughs> Amen. And then we can, and, and the reality of this you can get mad and upset, or you can get broken and say, okay, I won't be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Huh? When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, God has given us very clear evidence of what it looks like. And I want to spend a little time talking to you about the evidence of what it looks like. First and foremost, to be saved, to, to know the Lord Jesus Christ. See, John, if you look at John's writings, whether it's the Gospel of John and especially the Epistles of John, he is really agonizing to give people, especially God's people, the proof and the evidence of what it, what it truly means to be right with God. Because see, he saw, he saw the revelation of Jesus. He understood of, about the great deception that would come. He understood how the powers of darkness would run interference with the plan of God and deceive people. So he labored and agonized to help people understand these are the people who are truly right with God. These are those who are righteous. These are those who are sinned. These are those who know God. These are those who do not know God. He, he, here is how you overcome the powers of darkness. These are the things that he, that he emphasized. And it needs to become an emphasize, emphasis in everybody's life. So I want you to open your Bibles quickly with me now to uh, Revelation chapter 21. Many people are afraid of the book of Revelation. I love this book. In fact, when we're done with order in the house, I'm going to begin to minister on the book of Revelation. I haven't done it since probably the early 90s. But it's just such an, a, a great time. So we're going to run, we'll run order in the house for about three months. And then the next three months will be uh, three to four months. I'm just going to be ministering on the book of Revelation and then whatever the Lord leads from that uh, point on. But. Uh, you know, Oz Dogana Mandalay. School of Spirit won't stop. School of Spirit will always be every other week. There will be an alternate uh, uh, ministry going on with that, though. Hallelujah. My wife is excited. She I says, Ah, uh, look, hey, praise God. I'm, you know what? I, that's really all I need. I'll just do it for you. I mean, you got the biggest smile of anybody in here. <laughs> you know what? And that's more important to me. I want everybody to be so happy about what God's doing and yeah. what He's shown me. But, you know, the most important thing to me is that my wife is happy. And she's excited about the things of God. And she's saying, honey, I, I'm worn out. I'm worn out. But you know what? I want to do more. Okay, well, do we get to ever take a vacation again? Well, maybe someday. I, I was saying, I was telling, I was telling, and when we were up at, uh, we were up working at the Mission Train Center last week. And I said, here's what we're going to do. And it's going to be every night. And she's looking at me like, I said, baby. I promise you, I promise you, the Lord is going to give us a bit of a rest in 2015. 
I promise. But did she say, but you said that in 2000. <laughs> and in 2001 and 2002. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. <laughs> soon and very soon. <laughs> we're going to see the king. Soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. We'll be gathered round the throne there uh, as we behold the king. Uh, we'll be gathered round the throne there as we behold the king. We'll be gathered round the throne there as we behold the king. Soon and very soon, we'll behold the king. And I, I want you, dear people, to be able to be presented there as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ who did who laid down their lives, who were willing to suffer with him, ha, that you may be glorified together with him. I, I, I want you to be a people that are not way out in the outer nosebleed section because you just basically were saved by the skin of your teeth and you never really had much affection for Jesus, but he just had mercy on you. Huh? I want you to be the people whose hearts were united with him, whose life was poured out as a drink offering, whose life was every day a living sacrifice yes. for the king, who yes. gave everything yes. to the work of the ministry yes. that, that men might be saved. Because that's where Papa's heart's at. He would not know this. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. If you don't realize this, but God's love manifested in Christ Jesus, his deep, 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 deep love and compassion for the lost compelled him to go to a cross with joy, though he knew what it was going to happen, the shame and the reproach that he would bear. He gladly did so. And he wants you and I to understand that same affection, that same love. And then and when you baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire, you get that same love. You get that same affection. It reorganizes. You don't have excuses anymore. Uh -huh. You're not waiting for somebody else to go. You're not thinking that you don't have enough anointing. Uh -huh. You just are filled with love. And love compels you to do things that you never thought you would ever do. Love will compel you to take risks that otherwise you would have never taken. You'll lay down your life because of love. Your children get in trouble, huh? You'll throw yourself between the trouble and your child. Yes, you will. Love will compel you to give it all. And in Jesus' mighty name, you're going to understand that. You're going to take a hold of the grace of God. You're going to begin to lift up your voice and call out to heaven that the fires of revival will burn through your life, that the same glory that Christ Jesus made manifest uh, over the past 2,000 years in every awakening and every revival and every moving of the Spirit will take hold of you. You won't be talking about somebody else. You won't be saying, you won't be saying it's my brother, it's my sister, but you're going to be saying, it's me, O oh Lord. Uh -huh. Standing in need of being shaken to the core of my life, having everything about my life conformed. I'm not talking conform to you. I'm not talking about some, some obligation. I'm not talking about some legal acts to earn right access to the Lord. I'm talking about being in the position where you know that you've been washed in the blood, where you know that you've, been, you've had a new heart, you've had a new spirit, and the power of God's come upon you and changed you, and your heart's been united with God. You live for Him and follow Christ Jesus and have the fruits of the new birth in your life. Or you take a hold of God for yourself. <laughs> you don't live off of somebody else's anointing. Huh? I don't live off of somebody else's anointing. That's why I don't need music. I don't live off somebody else's anointing. Huh? Hallelujah. I live off the one He gave to me out of a relationship that I personally have with Him. Huh. I don't need somebody else to be in the prayer meeting. I have a move of God everywhere I go continually because I found access to the throne of grace. I found an entrance into the holies of holies. I go there. I don't dream about it. I go there. I recognize that's where I stand. I have access 
into the throne room. Hallelujah. I have access into the holies of holies. I live my life. I live my life in my deeds and my conduct and my behavior and the things, the decisions I make as in, in view and a conscious awareness that I'm before the Father. I'm standing before Him. He beholds everything that I'm doing. And I know that that is the first step to being able to see the Father do a work so that you can do it too. Having a conscious awareness of His presence. Having a conscious awareness that, is, that He sees and hears uh, what's going on in my life. And so before I do anything, I'm struck by the fear of God. I'm struck by the awe of his judgments. I'm struck by the depths of my love for him, and I don't want to grieve him or hurt him. I want to do it his way. Amen. Amen. Father notices that. He notices that. He notices what's going on in here that we can just downplay. He knows, notices what's going on in our hearts that we can just cover over. Uh, oh, But when he finds truth, when he finds the depth of sincerity within our lives. My, I'm telling you right now, then you step into a place that whatever you ask, he does it. Then you step into a place of knowing him in such a way. <laughs> that these same works, these same works are all about reaching the lost. It's not about some kind of, you know, uh, career move in the kingdom of God. These same works is all about doing those things that Jesus showed us how to do. Not because you have to, because you want to, because you feel with the same love, you feel with the same nature, you feel with the same goodness, because Father is the soul of the world. Hallelujah. Mam branda, take that today. Most people run from suffering. Jesus embraced it. He hugged it. He hugged it. He hugged it. Somebody said, "Oh, somebody need to help Jesus with the cross." He hugged it. He hugged it close. And carried it all the way to the Mount Golgotha for you and for me. He hugged the cross with its splinters, with its weight. He hugged a cross that would be the tool used to create such pain, desperate pain and torment. He hugged it. Love compelled him. He did not have to. He did not have to. As the song says, he could have called 10,000 angels. He could have. He could have said, no, stop it, Father. I didn't want to go through with it. But love compelled him. The thought never entered his mind, for his mind was captivated by the love of God. Oh, that you should know such love. First evidence that you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Oh, that you should know such love. First evidence that you've been born of the Spirit and, been, and then matured and grown properly in the kingdom. There's people, I know that they called upon the name of the Lord and they were born of the Spirit. But immediately they begin to backslide. Immediately they begin to go back to the former conversation. Immediately they begin to have the same manner of conduct and living and feeling and attitude that they had before the heart was changed. And they grew crooked instead of growing straight. They grew having their nature and their life conformed superimposed upon the world instead of stamped with the image of Jesus Christ. Stamped with the glory of the Father. Because in their heart as they read the word, they said, oh God, I need to have that love. Oh God, I need to have that compassion. Oh God, I need to know this way. Oh Lord, that I may know you, the one who loved me so that you would redeem my soul from destruction, that you would give everything that you have because you valued me so costly. I got to know that love. Unfortunately, it's been a few in humanity who respond to God that way, but everyone who has, before they died, huh, before they died, before they departed this life, they took a hold of a power of God that changed people. We look at Churches today, denominations that had moves of God, now they fortified cities of rebellion and defiance against God. And you walk into a place and you can feel demon power everywhere. Satan's ability to imprison those who had the ability, really, through the anointing, to completely and totally defeat his power. You think that you're not at war? You're at war. You're at war. 
<laughs> you may not be at war, but Satan truly and surely wars against you, and he wars against the church to stop you, to keep you distracted, to keep you defeated, to keep you powerless, having a form of godliness, but you deny the power, not in word, but in deed, in passion, in heart, in purpose, in soul, denying the power of God to work in your life. Uh, God has never let anybody down. He's just as faithful as he is full of love. He's just as faithful as he is full of holiness. He's a body who's going to go for him and be willing to do what he says to do. He's going to, be, he's going to resource them, support them, uphold them. And they have fruit. Hallelujah, that will abound. Amen. He have gone, he's going to minister an entrance into the everlasting kingdom. Amen. To everyone who does these things. They won't be barren and unfruitful. If you're barren and unfruitful, if you're barren and unfruitful in the movings of signs and wonders and miracles, you have to deal with your own passion, your own love life. If you're barren and unfruitful in reaching the lost, you have to deal with the fact of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and your relationship, most important, with the Holy Spirit who's supposed to be your master. You're supposed to be his slave. My master has come to show me how to function in this love that purchased my soul, that purchased my salvation. Oh, my, my. Oh, my God. Father, we thank you that you send your fire on this place. We thank you that you send your fire upon the people's hearts in this place, that those who need to repent, they would do so quickly. I know about Cain, his countenance was fallen. When he was rebuked of God, his countenance fell. He got upset at God because God wasn't pleased with what it was he did, and he thought he'd, he should have at least gotten some credit. Wow, can't make him happy for nothing. God says there's... Your countenance has fallen because I rejected your offering. Now, take the offering that I've showed you, I've accepted, and offer it, and I will accept you. Today, you need to recognize, if you need to repent, you get after it. If you recognize in your life that you've been living wrong, you've been doing things wrong, if your husband's been telling you you're out of order, you've argued with him, you need to repent to your husband and say, I fought you. I've, 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 I've defied you. And I recognize now that I was defying God and fighting God the whole time. I was defying the Holy Spirit the whole time. Huh? You men, if you've been unwilling to let Christ Jesus be your master, you've been unwilling to do those things which the Spirit of the Lord has instructed you to do, you need to repent and recognize that you dishonored your head, Christ Jesus. It was Him you fought against. When you fought against the, the preacher, when you fought against the minister, when you didn't like the word, when you were ready to stand up and denounce it, it was him that you were touching. Repent, because he's so full of mercy and grace, he'll forgive you right now. He'll set you back upon the right way. Prophet said, back in the days of Smith Wigglesworth, a prophet that traveled with Wigglesworth, he was known as the prophet of the assemblies of God and uh, of that denomination. Just, that's, that's just how he was known. But nonetheless, he said, as we see the day approaching, we're going to come to understand that the way into the kingdom will become narrower and narrower. Today, I hope that you can hear the sound of his voice. I hope that you understand that such great deception will take you out. It will take you out. It will take you out with whatever snare will work against you. And the only possible place of protection is the fire and the glory of His presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live, I'm going live, I'm gonna live in a, when I'm, I'm gonna live in a safe area. I'm going to live in a safe area. If you're living in a war zone, you want to live in a safe area. Huh? Huh? You want to live in an area where you're protected. Well, the name of the Lord is like a high tower. They that run in will be saved. I'm going to tell you, live in a place protected, you can't get any more protection than being constantly baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Satan will not be able to access you. That's what John was saying in 1 John 5, 18. He's saying, everyone who's born of God, let me under help you understand, because the deceiver's lying in wait to deceive. Everybody who's born of God does not sin. He keeps himself, and the wicked one cannot touch him. Wow, I'm going to stay there. I want to be there. 
being there, there are proofs and evidence that you're there. One of them is a love and a compassion for a lost and dying world. Everything that was going on in the nature and the disposition of Jesus Christ is going on in you. And when it's not, you are desperate about what's going on in my life that I become, I become cold and indifferent towards God. I become lukewarm and satisfied and self-justified. Cry out to God in sincerity and truth. Through prayer and fasting, things change. They'll change. Huh. John writes in Revelation 21, and I want you to understand if, if, you, if you were to put in the word overcomer into your search engine, you would find all of the messages on the overcomer in the, book, in the books that John wrote. He understood the dynamic of what we would be up against in these last days right now at this time. And he says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7, he says that he that overcomes shall inherit all things. Wow. Wow. What a reward. What a goal. What a purpose. What are you laboring for? What harvest do you expect? What kind of retirement plan are you looking forward to? He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And of course, you know, when you go through the list that he writes there in, in, in chapter 2 and chapter 3, he that overcomes, I will give him a new name. He that overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the house of my God. He that overcomes shall sit down with me in my throne, even as I sat down with my father in his throne. He that overcomes, I will give him a white raiment. He that overcomes, I'll write a new name and give it to him, and he alone will know it. Hallelujah. He'll have my name. My goodness, it just keeps going. He that overcomes, here's the power that overcomes the world. <laughs> This faith realm of Jesus. I understand the faith realm of Moses. I understand the faith realm of Abraham. I understand the faith realm of Elijah. I understand the faith realm of Daniel. I understand the faith realm as it's written out in Hebrews chapter 11 of those who lived mighty for God. But how about the faith realm of Jesus? It's a new kind of faith revealed. A faith that is to be seen in all those born of Him. The faith realm that overcomes sin. The faith realm that overcomes Satan. I write unto you young men because you're strong and the word of God abides in you and you've overcome the wicked one. I mean, that's not just talking about your own personal life in terms of how you deal with sin and temptation and truly it must begin there. But it's testifying of how you go everywhere conquering the powers of darkness that has ensnared men's lives and souls and blinded them so they cannot see this glorious gospel. It's the power and the authority that unloose, that unlocks and looses those who've been snared. Opens up every prison door and sets the captives free. <laughs> the overcoming power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, Those who overcome will inherit all things. Everybody who's been born of the Spirit and has the Spirit of the Son on the inside of them cries out, Oh, Father! Yes, Lord God! Show me how! Father, that's all I want! That's the Spirit of the Son. Father! With strong prayer and supplication, they lift up their voice and are heard in that they fear. Father, all I desire is your glory, your realm, your heaven, your place, relationship with you, interaction with you, you alone. Oh God, are good. There's none else, no other one besides you that loves me so, that has a life that is worth living. <laughs> I must know you. That's what happened to every person you look back in history who the power of God began to move in the life. They began to cry out to God until they touched heaven heaven touched them. You know when you touched heaven, Heaven touches you. And all of a sudden, from that day forward, Jesus is seen in you. And then that, once that happens, every day that grows. And the dimension of the faith of Christ Jesus matures. And the expressions of the diversity of gifts become far more effective through your life than you ever imagined. 
And as we move forward in doing the things that God has given us to do and the privilege to rule and reign with him, hallelujah, the privilege to go everywhere with his divine power and authority and set the captives free, we find ourselves constantly in this place and dimension of understanding. You will inherit all. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to inherit all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting prepared by God to go invade the nation of Japan. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm getting prepared by God to go invade other nations with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So is every person who sets their heart and their affection on one great prize, on one great pearl, on one great treasure, on one great pressure, one, one great exceeding precious promise that has been given to us. Mm-mm-mm. Hallelujah. To live this life of Jesus. Can there be anything more, more valuable? Could there be a greater opportunity given to us than to be able to, to live this life of Jesus? Can we move out of religion? Love you. Can we move out of religion? Can we move out of religion and move into relationship? Can we move out of someday and trying to play, pretend and make believe and start having some proofs, start having some fruit that abounds under the salvation of San Diego County, of your neighborhood? You have to ask yourself how many neighbors around you right now have no idea that you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and have the power and authority to call down heaven upon their life and bring torment and pain to an end. You have to ask yourself. Huh? What do people think about you? What do they see when they see your life? Are they seeing Jesus? Are they seeing a Jesus that they want to have a relationship with? Are they seeing a Jesus that, huh? No, thank you. Are they, are, is the love of God being manifested? Is the, is, the, is the joy and the goodness and the grace of God being manifested. It's not even possible without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there in that place, these expressions of divine power and life flows out of you like rivers. The Lord says to us here, this is very important that you get a hold of this. I'll finish reading verse 7 because I want to get to verse 8. He says, and I will be his God... And he shall be my son. Verse 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving and those that my soul abhors. And it just translated one word abominable. But when people hear about abominable, they think about the abominable snowman. (laughs) And it's it's that which is abhorred. And in this context, God's talking, so he's saying it's that which my soul abhors. God abhors demon activity. He abhors sin and iniquity. He abhors it. Love you. He abhors it. Do you abhor it? And murders. And those who are pornos. Those who are pornos. I'm just going to give you the Greek word. It says whoremongers here. But everybody, no pornos per- person here thinks they're a hor- whoremonger because they don't even know what a whoremonger is. Uh-huh. 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 Is that a person who goes around and kills prostitutes or something? No, it's not a whoremonger. You don't know what it is. It's pornos. It's everyone who practices any kind of sexual immorality. Pornos, that's what it means. Sexual immorality. And you can see that is one of Satan's primary fronts right now as he saturates the world through the Internet. That's why I want to have, I want to be more focused on the Internet. I was, I was talking to, Dear friend of mine, God used him in amazing ways and talked to him about Japan and how we're going to reach Japan. And he said the Lord showed him in 1995 that 
because the Japanese love cartoons so much. I want you to take notes on this, okay? Because they love cartoons so much that to start saturating Japan with cartoon messages of the gospel and the power of God will be extremely effective. The Lord showed them. He could, you could take Japan with it. So we've got a school of art that we're developing, and everybody who knows how to do any kind of artwork, you get yourself in it because we're going to start doing cartoons for Japan. <laughs> huh? We're going to take a template, the cartoons that they already have, use the same kind of style and format, and it's going to be gospel messages, and we're going we're to begin to invade that nation with literature. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because Satan is using every means possible that he can use to invade the minds of people. 60% of Japanese people, the Japanese men, have no friends that are girls. 50% of Japanese girls have no friends that are men. Their society is constantly dropping. Satan has focused on destroying them as a nation and as a people. We see as they teeter in the crisis of Fukushima and the meltdown of, 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 of Reactor 3 in Fukushima and all the rest of the stuff that goes on. It's going to be fine. I pray and I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, work a miracle and heal Fukushima. Amen. So don't worry about Fukushima. <laughs> uh, praise God, Fukushima is healed. Amen. And so I said, oh, what about radioactivity? Ah, radio. Hey, listen, you don't have to be concerned about the air that flies by night, nor by the pestilence that, that wax worse at noonday. And there's no pestilence like radioactivity. We don't have to worry about no radioactivity. Flame don't kindle upon us. We don't drown, and we don't get affected by radioactivity. Amen. Hallelujah. And then when we ever ask, Father, God, he'll do it for us. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. You believe that? Well, you're going to, uh, right now when you got the Geiger counter out and it's dropping. <laughs> Uh, and we'll see what you believe. It's trying to grow in faith now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and people growing out a third arm, you got glory of God shining on your face. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mangalisha God. Later. Hallelujah. Father's blessing. Father's going to bless me. As he has, he's going to continue to bless me. He's going to bless me more and more. He's going to increase my greatness. He's going to bless my house. Hallelujah. He's going to bless everything I touch and everything I do so long as I don't compromise with demon spirits. And I want him to bless you too. Yeah, I know who my God is. I know how, what it is he means. To, I know what he means to me. I have to, I'm just wanting to challenge you and help you to deal with what he really means to you because that's the most important subject and question and issue of your life. And he says, and sorcerers, sorcerers, those who use drugs for enchantment. That's what it means. It's the, the word that is used, the Greek word is, what, is the word we dr derive pharmacology from. Go read. It's the word we derive pharmacology from. Pharmakios. And it literally means to use drugs with enchantment. Once again, it's another one of the big fronts. In Japan right now, people are so... Threatened, so fear, full of fear and terror. They don't go out of their house. The decline in schools is, hum is huge. The percentage of it is, is staggering of people who never leave their home. Young people. At one one uh, Japanese person was telling me, if you started an online school, you could begin to reach tens of thousands of kids because at the age of seven, eight years old, they're so stricken by terror and fear, they won't leave their house. And they stay that way all their life. And, and there's a special, they have a name for them. And it used to be a small population. And now it's a growing population. And that makes me so mad. I'm ready to punch something. I'm ready to kick something. I'm ready to charge at it with everything that I am. Huh? Are you with me? Yes. And then I escalate that by doing it in the spirit. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? You sit there and lollygag while God, while, when God's giving you all this power and authority while Satan takes over the world? Give me a break. Sit there and complain about whatever it is you're going through. Get it. It's ridiculous. And come get, get, look, get a look and see. Get a look, look and see. Get a look around. Huh? Look at all the need. And to begin to understand that you don't have to try to, to meet that need through human effort. But God should supply us with all the riches 
of his kingdom, of all the authority that he himself possesses, to go out there and set the captives free, open up prison doors to them that are bound, to turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God. And we want to sit around here and, 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 and play patty cake with your problems, my problems? Give me a break. That's insanity. I have nothing to do with that mess. Are you with me? Come on, get up and start doing what Jesus told you to do. Amen. Amen. Come get, rise up in the power of God and forget about yourself. Deny yourself. It's just causing problems for you and everybody else. Amen. Take a hold of the divine power and glory of God and live an abundant life full of joy, unspeakable, hallelujah, and full of glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do something with yourself. Do something with your life. Amen. Do something with your life. In Jesus' name. <laughs> hallelujah. The Lord says he's contrasting the overcomer. What are you and, what are you and I going to have to overcome? What are we going to have to be willing to help people understand that they're going to have to overcome? You Are you listening to me? Yes. Because, you know, it's one thing to say we come, call upon the name of the Lord and, 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 and the Lord does what he's supposed to do and, and promise to do and will do and changes them and give them a new heart. But then you and I have got to be willing to bring them into the company of the church and help them understand, listen, you can't have these things going on in your life and be right with God. God wants to show you and teach you how to become an overcomer so that Satan and all that he, all his tricks and all of his lies and all his ploys aren't going to have any power or effect over you. Because the Lord's looking at those who overcome. He says, come on in, I inherit all things. But everybody else that is without, those who do not overcome, what is it that they're not overcome? Everything that God has soul abhors. And he lists in the scripture all those things which his soul abhors. He abhors all evil. Huh? God abhors strife. Huh? God abhors everything that's listed in the seven, 17 works of the flesh. He abhors it. He abhors murdering and understanding the people murder one another. Huh? Not just with a knife or a club or whatever Cain used to kill Abel. But John already laid this down in 1 John chapter 3. They murder one another with actions and attitudes of hate. Huh? And then God don't have a like zone. Huh? <laughs> you either love like he loves or you hate. Period. Hallelujah. And the Father's not ready to baptize no church or no assembly with his power and the Holy Ghost who's got a mixture going on. He says, cast out the... Uh, the, the unleavened, the leaven rather, so that you can become a, a new lump of unleavened. God's purpose that you and I separate ourselves from, from those things. His purpose that you and I have a place of consecration to him that we don't allow those things in our life. He says everybody's without. Everybody who continued to go on in demon, the practice of demon spirits, the practice of those things, that Satan is used to destroy men to be cast in like a fire. He says the sorcerer, drugs. Today in the United States of America, now it's legal to sell marijuana in the state of, I guess it's Colorado, for recreational uses. People have no idea. They started off as imbibing evil spirits through alcohol. Now it's opening themselves up to a whole other realm of the demonic by smoking marijuana. And it won't be long the way things are going. And Jesus has smoked it too. Just like he got drunk. Huh? So I tell me the other day, you know, Jesus, he turned the water into wine and he tell me that's not alcohol. I said, well, let's just talk about it. Okay? The governor says that we already all drunk, well drunk. You ever seen anybody, you ever seen anybody well drunk? Huh? They, they well intoxicated, well drunk. And now Jesus is going to make 120 bottles of even better wine so you can even get more staggering drunk. Give me a break. If you believe that, you have no concept of God. Huh? There's a far better way to understand that passage of Scripture. My goodness gracious. In fact, if it is new wine, talk about the new covenant anyway. Talk about drinking of the Holy Ghost. Masata karanete itala. Talk about a whole new realm of living in a divine sweet relationship with God above. But it ain't going to be long Jesus smoking weed as well. You know, find that scripture. Huh? Huh? Every herb and everything <laughs> comes out of Jesus. You got to go to Genesis. There's no end to it. There's no end to deception. 
There's no end to deception. Hmm. Idolatrous. I'm telling you, all covetousness is idolatry. You got to have your stuff. I'm not going to, you need to take everything you've got and make sure it belongs to him. Somebody asked me about my horses. I said, don't worry about them horses. Those are the kingdom of God horses. They'll treat you good. <laughs> they belong to the kingdom of God. The spirit of the Lord is upon them. Don't worry about them. They're not going to kick nor bite. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to take everything you've got and put it in the kingdom of God and then recognize how it's being spent in the kingdom of God and how it's being used in the kingdom of God. Otherwise, you're going to get carried away into covetousness. You and every one of you need to be right now ready to buy a one-way one -way ticket somewhere uh, to some place on the face of the earth to go preach the gospel, at least have that willingness to do it. Father, I'll do it. anything you tell me I'll do it. I'm not tied to nothing. I'm not tied to anything. I'm not tied to anything. Huh? We're not going to send you to the far reaches of the, 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 the jungles of Indonesia right now. We're going to send you right across the street. We're going to send you to the neighborhood. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to test out this commitment and test out this consecration to buy a one-way ticket. To go do those things which Father's heart is purpose for you to do. Can you think of anything better that you would want to do with your life than what Father's purpose for you to do? Anybody here? We'll, we'll open this up for an opportunity. Speak. Anybody here think of something better to do with your life than what Father's purposed and written out in this word for you to do? Then we want you to begin to enjoy it and understand it and live it to, to the full. Amen. And he says, in all liars. Shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. I'm crying out to God and I'm asking Father in His mercy and His grace to cause Holy Ghost conviction to fall upon His church again because too much rebellion has set in. Too much dissension. Every man being right in his own eyes has set in. What sets in right after that is the imagination of the heart is only wicked continually. I'm saying, oh, Father God, in your grace and your mercy, let there be, let there be a light of a church. Let there be a, a company of people who will, who will live under Holy Ghost conviction, who will live under Holy Ghost instruction, who will, who will make the Holy Spirit, the spirit of holiness, their master. Those hearts are set not on this thing and that thing, not on earthly cares, not on earthly interest, but heaven. You know what happened to Mariah Wood with Edder? Heaven became a reality to her. And once heaven became a reality to her, the blind saw, the deaf heard, the crippled walk. She would visit heaven continually. Heaven became a reality to her. How? She laid hold on that realm because there was nothing more important to her. There was no idol in her way. There was no other earthly interest captivating her attention. That's what I want. I want no earthly interest captivating my attention. The only way that that even begins to be possible is when you launch yourself, you plunge yourself over into all the things that belong to heaven that Christ Jesus showed us to do. When you, when you give yourself completely and radically and fully over to doing his will, heaven becomes your home. Heaven becomes your home. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. On the outside, those who are cast into outer darkness, those who are never even allowed to come in, the, the, those who are, are full of doubt, understand doubt is your enemy. Quit wavering in it. Get radical. And throw yourself with total abandonment over into the realms of the kingdom. 
doubt is your enemy. It would destroy you. Second guessing, a second thought about it. With total abandonment, cast yourself into the sea of His will. Hallelujah. Prukul manasati. Unbelief is your enemy. It's your enemy. It's all mixed. It's all found in that mixture. It's all found in that influence of the world. Philosophies. Opinions. Doctrines of men. Influences of demon spirits. Come over here and try to mix itself with the word of God. And makes you ineffective. Just like it did the disciples that day. They had authority. They were sent out by Jesus. But now they come up against this young man who's demon-possessed and demon would take and oftentimes come upon him and try to destroy him, throw him in the fire and throw him in the water. Suddenly the opinions and doctrines of men begin to influence them. They say, well, he's lunastruck. And as soon as that began to be mixed with the word, they become ineffective. They had no more power. They had no ability. Unbelief set in. That's what Jesus said, unbelief. It's time you and I recognize with total abandonment we will follow Jesus. It's time we recognize, we sealed, we stamped with the Holy Ghost and Satan and his demon spirits and his sin and his iniquity can find no habitation to speak through our mouth or to affect our desires and appetites. When the line is drawn and you know that all of that is in the world and what's really in your heart are the desires of the Father because he gave you this new heart. And all that's there in your life is desires of Christ Jesus and the nature of the Holy Ghost. And Satan is trying to deceive you and make you believe that all this that belongs in the realm of iniquity is something that you want. When you, when you have wisdom and insight to recognize it is not your desire. It is a demonic ploy set to destroy your soul, to neutralize you, to make you ineffective in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. Suddenly, you'll begin to find a realm of obedience and insight to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. There'd be no guile in this place. If you, if you have guile in your life, if you have evil speaking, if you find this reoccurrent thing where you're constantly being tricked and coming under the influence of a demon spirit where you speak evil, and God, a criticism, an accusation against people. You need to be delivered. God hates that as much as he hates any other sin in adultery, fornication, witchcraft. You've got to recognize it for what it is. It will destroy your soul. It's a ploy of the enemy to neutralize you. At best. At worst, to destroy your soul in hell. God said they shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. My God. My God. Do you understand how greed Father is about sin? Do you understand now why the preacher screams, why the prophet prophesies with such intensity? Can you understand God's loathing of iniquity that he would create such a judgment? He's so deeply grieved and vexed by it. Do you understand how Father is so hurt in his heart when we choose to leave our love relationship with him and go carouse with demon spirits and allow demon spirits to invade us in, 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 in intimate ways when we were set aside only for his holiness and only for his purpose? And is he so merciful that he's made a way for us to be clean again when we've been contaminated by unclean spirits? Nothing can defile a man unless it enters his heart. As soon as sin is allowed to work in our life, it enters our heart. It defiles us. It makes us unclean. But I praise God for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and makes us clean. Cleanses us from all sin. Cleanses us from all the influence and effect of demon spirits. I have proof I've been born again. I've been cleansed from the power and the influence of demon spirits. 
I've been cleansed from the power and the influence of those things that Satan would try to do to mock God and grieve God, bring a reproach against his kingdom through my life. Today, we're calling out to you. Let this be the Sunday service that marks a turning point in your life. For you live from this day forward as an overcomer to inherit all things. Let this day be for you a time in your life that marks a complete surrender. Catherine Cohen would tell people, I can take you to the day that I died that I no longer live, that I determined I would live only for God from this day forward. Not for myself, but for Him. I love the story of Catherine Coleman. She's sitting in a church, a Methodist church. They, she described that she wasn't even sure the pastor was saved. He was so dead. But she sat there and the power of the Holy Ghost came upon her and she felt the presence of Jesus. As a 10-year-old girl, I believe she was 10, 9 or 10, her life was changed. She gave her heart life over to the Lord. The Holy Ghost came to visit. She had proof that the Holy Ghost came to visit. Will you let God demand change of your life? Will you let him? Will you? To where the pastor can come and look at you and say, you don't do that anymore. Don't act that way. Don't be that way anymore. That is your enemy. And you'll go, yes, sir. And not carry an offense. Allow a demon spirit to immediately come in and run interference with the word of God and give you a spirit of an offense. To where you walk around carrying a hurt because he said something bad to me and he said something good to you. Satan turned around and made it a lie. And as soon as he did, as soon as Satan did, until you repent, it's a stronghold in your life to this day, even if it was 50 years ago. If you didn't repent, it's a stronghold in your life. If it was 20 years ago, if it was two hours ago, it's a stronghold in your life. It needs to be broken. It can only be broken by the power of repentance. It can only be broken by the blood of Jesus Christ can only be broken by a true and sincere heart that says, I'm never going to do it again. I don't want that way, oh God. I do not want the ways of this world. I want no interaction with demon spirits from this day forward. I want nothing that does not look like complete conformity to your person, to your will, to your way. Be conformed to the image of the Son is what we've been predestinated to be. To no longer be conformed to the world in any way, but be transfigured by thinking differently about yourself. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, be changed, be converted, be restored. In Jesus' name, come under the mandate of the Holy Ghost and let Him be your master and no longer have it your way. But let the master show you His way and be conformed in every area of your life to His way. In Jesus' name.